This is the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, March 1st, 2021. This is episode 33, and we are sampling a Belgium-style sour ale, a West Coast IPA, a hazy double IPA, and a fruited triple IPA. It's the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. Got your other host, Charlie. Hello. We got tech guy, Steve. Hello. Steve. So today, guys, we uh, <clears throat> we have a uh, sour and then three IPAs we're going to run through. Woohoo. Yay. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to kind of see what's going on. We got a, uh, I got like a, a Horace and uh, Stave, uh, Barrel and Stave uh, collaboration sour, mm-hmm. and then a, uh, an IPA from Burning Beard. An IPA, a double IPA from Moxa, and a uh, triple IPA from Pure Project. Pure. Pure, Pure. Project. <laughs> the San Diego County um, trifecta or quadruple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, outside of uh, outside of a Moxa. Oh, yeah. Um, but, That's right. But outside of that, yeah. No, we're uh, definitely... Wow. Um, a couple of these beers came out this week. Mm. Um, I think uh, one of them... Uh, I think what well, we're going to start with this, uh, this Horace and uh, um, Barrel and Stave... Uh, Sour here. So at at uh, it smells pretty good. Yeah. So on Thanksgiving, Horace released a bunch of. Uh, um, actually, I think it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, or maybe I think it was Black Friday. Actually, it came out. But they um, he did a bunch of he did all of his over uh, overflow, like all everything that that was extras, and then he released this set. It was four bottles of these sours that they had then. Uh, um, uh, added different teas as ad- adjuncts. I'm going to say this is the most interesting looking stuff that I've ever seen from Morris because the bottle's different. It's a clear bottle, so you're seeing the color of this beer, and it's uh, quite interesting. A red uh, red label with a bunch of eagles flying on it and landing, and then uh, Horace up above there. It's Convocation 2020. Yeah, so that's um, that label right there is his convocation. Um, all, uh, his sours come out mainly to um, to the convocation only, but but then um, those have been the same labels like nineteen or, or I think two thousand nineteen, two thousand twenty. Um, so this is a uh, it's a collaboration with the uh, um, the Stave and Nail, uh, Stave and Nail uh, up in in San Marcos, uh, and then Horace. Um, but yeah, the the. They talked Ooh. about the. Or he talked about the color on the labels. Um, so they're all they're they're all in clear bottles, so you can see what the color of, of each one of these sours are. And then he took his um he had his uh, his his daughter match crayons to the different colors of the beer to oh. uh, to match up the the cool. labels. Oh, so they all kind of match the uh, um sixty four pack of crayons. <laughs> this is a white wine barrel aged Belgian style sour aged on berry. Maritag tea and plums. So the the Maritag, that's probably not pronounced Maritag. The whole um the whole set he um they had a different tea, a different a different adjunct and then a different tea. Mm. So like a different fruit and a different uh, different tea in there. I don't know that I could taste the tea, but can you? I don't think I can. I don't, I don't think, think I can either. I don't know if it's um I don't know how I would because I it's tea. Yeah. Can you I don't taste any I mean you never know. But it's it is a sour, I'll tell you that. It is definitely sour. It certainly is, uh yeah. No, for for sure. Yeah, so the so on berry tea and uh and plums. And uh this what's what do they call that tea though? It's a meritage or merit merit meritag, meritage. I'm gonna tell you here. I mean, well, I got my assistant over here. I mean it's uh M E R I T A G E. You pronounce that E? Or is that silent? Silence. Tastes pretty good. It is. It is a funky sour. Let me tell you that. It dries out your mouth. That wine barrel uh, dries out your mouth real quick. So it says, uh, um, yeah, Meritage is a blend of uh, two or more uh, Red Noble Bordeaux varieties of wine. Hmm. Now we know. Sour. Def, ooh, gosh, definitely sour. It is pretty sour, but that's good, man. Yeah, no, it's um, I haven't had any any beers from uh, uh, Stave and Nail. 
No, I haven't. Uh, that's that's the first uh, uh, beer there that I've had from them. Never, uh, to be honest with you, I hadn't heard of them. They're right up in uh, North County. I think right now they're open one weekend a month, um, wow. but they're another another brewery that everything touches uh, wood. Um, oh, okay. They they um, age barrel uh, natural fermentation. Those are those are few and far between, but gosh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, no, they um just run through that place a couple days a week. It's just grab it and run <laughs> beer. <laughs> couple days, couple days a week. <laughs> It'd be interesting, you know. I'd probably get caught every other time, maybe, but <laughs> this is pretty dang good, though. I'll give them that. It's all right, huh, Morris? You done it. Mm-mm-mm. Hey, so uh, what type? Yeah. You guys have any decent beers this week? More than likely. <laughs> Should we go through this? What do you got? Oh gosh. Um, well, I had uh, I had some death, obviously, but uh, I also had. Um, ooh, oh, here it is from creative creature it's hawaiian sun pasio Gu- uh gua is an imperial sour smoothie it was uh pretty pretty decent though it was uh super fruity my neighbor jeff gave it to me so i was uh pleased to drink it for him but uh yeah there's some other ones uh let me see going oh. back to the sour though i think if i had to say where it fit in the sours that we've had, mm-hmm. it's probably way at the top, right? And I mean, it, I mean, I, I don't have the taste buds that you guys do, but it seems like it's a, it's, I mean, I, it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's not like it's so, so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So it's not, I mean, it is pretty sour, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And I think um, the, uh, but most of the sours we've had, you guys have been holding on to for a while. So right. This one yeah, is for, just okay, yeah. This right? is, yeah, with six months, I guess. Yeah. Not even here with like it came, this came out like, the end of end of uh, November, I think. Yeah, it's a likey. Uh, so I uh, had some Indigrin, uh Dunkel Lager and uh, Better Haze Ahead from uh, White Labs. I had uh, two of those that were two different types of uh, yeast, obviously. So they were both good. So fun times drinking beers. Oh, and I did have that run of the mill from uh, Society, which was outstanding. What was the one you said before society? Uh, uh, the White Labs, uh, Better Haze Ahead, and I had the one with. Uh, there was two different types of uh, yeast in that one, and Integrin Dunkel Lager. Let me see. Oh, and I had a stout from um, Who Farted. <laughs> so that was pretty delicious. Uh, faster than the future, it was. Hmm. That was a fun one. Mmm, good stuff. I How about like you, Steve? Uh, I'm going to go with a uh, collaboration between Ale Smith and Stone. It's it's new. It just came out this week. It's called the Dual Exposure, a double IPA mm. with hibiscus and citrus. Very good. Hibiscus. That was all right, huh? Yeah. Um. So I uh, um, I had a couple beers that I was that I was really I actually you know I, I went to Society. Um, to uh, to grab lunch and um i had one of i uh, had one of their light beers which uh you know i, I know we talked about that i had had it one other one other time that's phenomenal just sitting out there in the sun eating some tacos enjoying that light beer oh, yeah. super super tasty uh you know comes in like four and a half percent or something and then i had their um uh, their their hazy which was phenomenal it was super it had that um it was like a, it's like a like a west coast hazy a little bit you mm-hmm. know where you have that like kind of bitterness up front and then, um, like the society or, uh, excuse me, uh, burning beard just came out with a hazy as well. Mm. Um, that has, uh, a lot of, a lot of bitterness up front. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. Are we going to try that one? No, we're going to try something else for them. Oh. Have you guys had the pistol Pilsner from Bergen? I haven't. No. Yeah. Did, did I you picked that? that up too. Yeah. How's that? It was good. It was yeah. really, really, really smooth. Really good. Bergen. Bergen. They make some pretty good beers. Yeah. I like them. Yeah, I'm yeah. a fan. Uh, I picked those up at the Parkway over there by my house. Parkway, Where? Oh yeah, Parkway, park, right, right around the yeah. corner from your house. Yeah. Guy, right. the guy's getting in, you know, pretty good beers. Get some pretty good beers. Yeah. It's a 
Chris tricked me into this drinking this beer today. This uh, new traditionalist. It's a West Coast IPA. So, what do you got there, Charlie? This is the Burning Beard, the new traditionalist uh, West Coast IPA, running at seven point five percent. And uh, it's East County beer, man. Um, Look who's, at that. who's that with there? The collab with? Uh, oh my goodness. Oh, it's a guy from Alpine, or uh, McElhaney. There it is. Is that right? Uh, yeah, is that how you say it? Well, it's got a lot of letters in it. <laughs> <laughs> McElhaney, I don't I guess that could... Uh, um, yeah, so they... So, um, Sean and uh, and Jeff collabed on this beer. Uh, it's like a like an East County IPA. Right? Yeah, it you is. Know, it's like a super East County. It's got a lot of, uh, um, so Sean from, from Alpine, yeah, Alpine Sean on, on Instagram. And, um, so he's, uh, they're, they're back in business out there as, uh, Mac- how do you say that, Charlie? You're Irish. McElhaney? Is that it? How do you say it? I mean, he may pronounce it different, but it, you know, he ain't here, so <laughs> he's getting it. How would you way. say he might? Uh, if if he didn't pronounce it like that, how do you think He'd he might pronounce say it? He'd probably say Sean McElhenney. <laughs> McElhenney. McElhenney. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work on uh, yeah, that gonna, pronunciation. We're gonna butcher it until he tells us different. So I was I was really excited about this beer. It came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they 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 came out with a test batch. Uh, I didn't get a, I didn't didn't have any of it at that point. Um, and now they, they just, uh, they just released it again. Um, it just came out in cans yesterday. Oh, that smells great. Good looking. Yeah. So they, uh, um, that stuff sold out quick last <sighs> time. Wow. Wow. Tastes like a West Coast IPA. <laughs> Amazing. That's super, super crisp. Huh? Love I mean, the that color. bitterness up front is awesome. Wow. That dry back end. They said they still have this or no? Is they it, do, yeah. yeah. It just got canned yesterday. Uh-huh. So it's super fresh. Yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of tropical notes in there, a lot of, a lot of grapefruit. It is bitter. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. No, the uh um I was super excited for this beer to come out. I've been waiting for like three weeks for that beer to come out. Um the and it East didn't County it didn't beer. disappoint. No. The the double East County beer. <laughs> It says uh, West Coast. So it's uh, they got this picture of the, the Burning Beard bus on there, which yeah. is great. Um, so yeah, Burning Beard and 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 Sean from uh, uh, McElhenney Brewing, formerly of uh, of Alpine. Uh, it says on the on the side of the can, a fresh new spin on a classic style. New traditionalist West Coast IPA is brewed the East County way, uh, with copious amounts of Strata, Chinook, and uh, Cairo Cascade hops. And just enough malt to tie it all together. This distinctively delicious beer explodes with flavor of pineapple, berry, tangerines, lemon, grapefruit. Classic meets contemporary. I like that can. malty taste there, though. I'm catching that at the end and mi- uh, at the middle and end after that bitterness jumps off. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a tasty beer. It you is a good beer. No, you're it good. It is a good beer, and the color is awesome, man. It's yeah. a rich golden <laughs> brownish. Well, and the sun's coming down just yeah, perfect well, yeah, in your. Yeah, it no, it's just. Hard. I mean, you just can't make a better picture of a beer yeah. coming off that that bright sun in Charlie's backyard. I like right, it. <laughs> right into the beer. Now I couldn't drink a lot of this. Yeah, I could drink a you know couple of pints, but uh, then I'd have to go right back to some new damage or something from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe some Banksy or Normcore. <laughs> yep. You know what? Uh, you know what else recently came out? Banksy and Nitro in cans. Oh, uh, uh, there you go. That uh, um, that just came out as well. Did yeah, you get any of that? last week, uh, possibly. Huh. Thanks for I the did. invite. Yeah, that's when I went over and met Jim the right. other day. I picked up a. Uh, um, yeah, no, it was phenomenal. I didn't. Um, I hadn't planned on having one when I got home, and then when I uh, I, I rode my scooter over there. I was taking the four pack out of uh, the back of my scooter. I dropped one, <laughs> cracked the, the the top of the can, so I had to drink it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the it was phenomenal. Nice, uh, creamy, foamy head. It was it was great. I'll bet. I was, uh, so I was super excited. Banksy on nitro. Banksy on nitro and cans. Wow. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna have to grab some of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then they um they had this new traditionalist and one other double IPA, mm. I think. Been canning a little bit out there. 
Yeah, their Instagram feed's really good because they do a lot of videos on the canning days. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's fun seeing how those cans go through. and I'm going to have to say they, they did a pretty dang good job. You know? That's a great beer. They do. They put out great beer out there. Yeah, not a not a problem for them. They they've done it up pretty well. We ready for number tray? What do you got over there, Chuck? I got a little got ISO Nelson a hazy double IPA from uh, Moxa. What kind of hops you got in there? Oh gosh, let me see here. Um, I'm gonna go all out on Nelson. Yeah, it looks like Nelson and Citra. Surpriser doubled it up on the uh, hops just to shock you. So it says over there, uh, they're 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 right up on this beer on this uh, this double New England. Uh, it says um, over the last couple of years they've been in search of uh, the best Nelson uh, Nelson hops we could find. Uh, hopefully that search is over because we just brewed the best Nelson hops we have ever used at our brewery. Now, this uh, one has a really... Thanks to the Hop Revolution, a new farm in, in New Zealand, this hazy double IPA is packed with tropical flavors of pineapple and candied papaya. Smells great. Uh, it's going to be a tough time topping this uh, Nelson beer. We can only hope to recreate recreate it. Nelson has a soft nose smell. I mean, it's not sharp or anything. It's just real mellow, to me at least. Everybody's got a different one, you know. Jump it in. Mm-mm. Oh, man. That's a taster. Good golly. What a difference between those two beers. I mean, look at the difference in just color and haziness. Oh, my God. You're a big West Coast guy, though, right? Uh, I'm trying to quit. (laughs) But I'm willing to try anything once. That is really smooth. Isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Compared to the other one, it's Uh, no bitterness, huh? Yeah, it's a drinker. It's a drinker. The um. So speaking of Moxa, or uh, you ended up with a couple of Moxa bottles today. Uh, yes, I did. The anniversary for uh, Mostra Coffee that they uh, brewed up for them. We should have cracked one of those just because. So know. it was Mostra fifth and sixth. Yeah. So the um. Yeah, they had a. They got their beer and wine license, so they were celebrating with selling a couple bottles this morning. Yeah, they're clearing out their cellar, I guess. Had to make some room for more coffee and beer, which is a great idea. But, uh, yeah, they're going to be opening up that place next door up there in Forest Ranch. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's a big place, you know. They'll it's that to- payway. It was originally a payway. Oh, is that what it was? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, I just took a look at it at the on the wall. There was a, sorry, folks, we're closing down sign from payway. Well, that was, uh, we saw the sign missing today, this morning at, 5 30. Did they say what type of food they're going to uh, put out there? Mm, I haven't heard that yet. I'm, I'm sure it'll be something interesting. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of ways you can go with that. I'm going to guess uh, Filipino and probably some, you know, mixing of different cultures, you know, which I think will be super interesting. Um, I don't know what they're going to do exactly, but it's, it's super exciting to see these guys, what they've done with coffee alone you know, let alone beer. I can imagine what the food is going to be like, you know, amazing probably in my guess, but um, super nice people up there. We went up there and grabbed some coffee. Chris got a free coffee out of I the did. deal. I was pretty excited. You know what? I also, I'm a huge fan of discounts, right? Mm-hmm. Of, yes. of saving. Uh, um, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for, uh, for a savings. And, you know, I, I just found out today uh, that when you buy a pound of coffee at, at Mostra, they'll give you a free cup of coffee. Hmm. I'm like, how many times have you bought coffee? And <laughs> well, I, I was for for a few minutes. I caught myself calculating. You know how much free coffee I missed out on, and then I was like, "Dang, I should have went through that line three times." So we had bought like three pounds of coffee. You know, be, like, Fill up a forty-two sorry. ounce yeah, mug right, of coffee. Right, yeah, thermos, and you can keep it warm all day. Yeah, exactly. Huh. That coffee is so good. I went home and um, so I, I I don't know what it was. Uh, some Thai, I think it's from Thailand. I think the uh, this coffee that I got today, maybe it's from Vietnam. Um, it was so, I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Every time I drink their coffee, just my like 
it's super good. It's, well, it's, uh, I got that barrel age. No, I had the not the barrel age, but the regular uh, cold brew with the fudge, oh fudge, and uh, strawberries again. Whew, man, so good. And I'm not a big cold brew guy either. So, I mean, I like hot coffee, but this morning I already drank hot coffee on the way up there, and so I filled up. I got two of those and dropped them in there, and uh, I think I still got a little bit left in there. I'll wander in there later and drink the rest of it so excellent excellent better than good let's put it that way yeah, yeah they, I, yep. they make uh, good copy yeah i like the decaf because that's what i have in the afternoon have you still been doing that mm-hmm. in the afternoon yeah. same uh same one yep the uh and when you're making one cup every day <laughs> it's right it lasts long yeah. <laughs> for sure it's like yeah because you're like, like what, what do you use 30, for a ratio on 30, your 30 it says 30 on the like 30 grams yeah, of coffee yeah, to, uh, to for one cup. Okay. So for it's like what? 16? Like nine or, nine what or is 12 it? beans or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a> small <laughs> number. You can count them out. Bean yeah. Because they, um, so the, uh, I use um, 17, like uh, 17 grams of water per, is it 17 grams? Mm. So I, I, I do like 300, um, 300 grams of water mm. and then, um, gosh, what is it? 30 grams of beans or whatever so like an ounce yeah so i kind of look at like every you know when i when i buy a a 12 ounce bag of beans or whatever for like it's like an ounce that you use for a pour over right like an ounce of coffee so like you know it's 24 dollars or whatever for 22 22 bucks for the bag but that's like 10 pour overs you know for like 225 a piece that's usually how i make them or or i'll do like um i'll do like six cups in a um uh like we have kind of a a coffee maker that that kind of replicates a pour over. Mm. Is that um, how you do yours? Mine's a pour over, complete pour over. Yeah, which is this one of those silver things I yeah. got it on Amazon. Right here, mm-hmm. five minutes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it takes a while, but it's also the time to de-stress mm-hmm. because all you're doing is pouring water onto the right. coffee, and you can't right. do anything else. Well, you're supposed to pour in a little bit of water to let it bloom. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then pour the rest over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I only watch like 300 hours of YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, I was doing that um, for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's wild how they, uh, um, the, the different grind. Like I, I, I was looking at this, um, this article the other day and it was like five different like world champion baristas and how they made their. Mm-hmm. So each one of them was a little yeah, bit different, different right? which is pretty wild to me, you know? All these guys, these are the best mm-hmm. guys in the world, right? right? Making coffee. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit different. I'm a fan of a pour over, though, for sure. So the Moxa, hazy. It's good. Good stuff. Real drinker. And so they would just, they'll just make a few, you know, the, this this just comes out infrequently or just. Uh, yeah. So it, um, Moxa releases, uh, they release a lot of beers, right? Like um, a couple times a month, they have yeah. their, their uh, can releases. And then their bottle releases. This was like one of their can releases last. Uh, it was it was um, a while ago, um, but they it was just one of their uh, one time releases. Yeah, they to, they they have quite a few beers coming out monthly, so I think that's why they can make this and move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Can it all and send it out, man? It disappears pretty quickly. Well, same thing with this new traditionalist, right? They're gonna they they brewed what they brewed, and then they'll probably. Once it's gone, it's gone, right? It's not going to yeah. come back. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, maybe uh, Yeah, maybe it will. There'll but be a new one next year or the, right. the next year's version of that. Right, and then we'll talk about, oh, that first one was so much better, <laughs> right? Or whatever, <laughs> you know? Um, the, um, Yeah, well, they did make, they, so it must have just been their test batch that they yeah. did a, a few weeks ago mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sold out pretty quickly, I think. Um, I mean, that's a great, it's a great West Coast IPA. I'm excited to see what uh, Sean does there. Yeah, it'll be interesting. The restaurant. I mean, I can imagine some of the recipes that guy's going to come up with. If he, you know, if pure hoppiness, exponential hoppiness were his thing, you know, he's going to come up with something super legit, I guarantee you. Those West Coast uh, IPA guys. Yeah. They'll be, uh, they'll come they'll be just sure. clamoring. Clamoring. Where's he at? Where's he brewing at? So I don't know where they're if they if they even have a location at this point. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, this was this was just brewed over at uh, Burning Beard. Burning Beard. Cool, cool. That'll be good. I mean, he can be like Horace, you know. 
if he wants. A gypsy brewer. Yeah. Just <laughs> moving from town to town. Move it on down. Cool, man. I like it. I like them all. I feel so I guess far. horse probably isn't really a Okay, we're gonna pick it? we're gonna pick our best, our favorite after we drink all of our taste. After all the next one? Yeah. All right. What do you got? Uh what's uh what's on tap last? I think you know what it is. I do know what it is, but let's hear you. This is, is a pure project and it is a triple. Uh this is ten point three percent. So sip lightly. And leave a lot for me. Embrace the Merc. Uh, this is a, uh, let me see here. Oh, we ain't got to. Oh, here it is. A triple Indian pale ale with dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. ISO is what it's called. Hashtag ISO, I guess. It looks like the Matrix. On the yeah, it's a little it does, yeah, numbers for and sure. letters. And, oh, and check this color. Yeah, so Red. they say um, another dangerously drinkable triple IPA from Winslow and team. The mosaic and citra create aroma of fruit punch, ripe cherry, uh, notes of passion fruit and guava on the palate. Smells pretty good. Yeah, the color on that's amazing. Like that super bright pink. Wow. Okay. Nice. That's a palate rester there, man. You just want to hold that in your mouth for a while. Mmm. You, yeah, I don't taste the 10.3%. That's for doggone sure. It's pretty amazing. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I'm still uh, still, still waiting. waiting on here. Oh, we're waiting on uh, Steve, huh? Steve's wrestling with it. Oh, look at that. Look at the color. Yeah, no, it, it certainly takes on that... Uh, it's red yeah, dragon that, fruit. That dragon fruit color, huh? Is that it dragon fruit, or passion fruit, dragon fruit. Ah, uh, passion fruit. Uh, it says, uh, oh, my yeah, goodness. passion fruit. I mean, it's pink. It's just like a super vibrant pink. I like it. Tastes super smooth. It is really good. So this, um, uh, this just released this last week. They uh, they released a couple of beers. A uh, Weldworks. Uh, they did a. Uh, hazy IPA collab with Weldworks, um, and then this, and then a Pilsner. A Pilsner. I taste the um, Pilsner. Not a fan. Yeah. I mean, compared to uh, some other Pilsners, it's uh, it's not not hitting the mark in my opinion. But hey, you know somebody's got to like it. Bet you all like it. Mm. I'm a big Pilsner fan. Well, I'm sending you home with one. So perfect. What do you think of that, Steve? That's good. It's all right. Yeah, you yeah. can't taste the alcohol at all. No, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty well That's hidden why it's there. Dangerous. That, uh, I like the color too. Yeah, that red is super inviting. I think when I when I see that color, I just expect it to be like super sour and like you know, like a little more acidic. Like, I mean, it's sour it's an IPA, or fruity, right? Right, something, right? It's and not. there's not a whole lot, right? Like right. you you get those. It's just smooth. It tastes uh, like a hazy, hops. right? It tastes like a Hazy with maybe dragon. It looks like fruit. a sour. Tastes like a hazy. Kicks your butt like a stout, though. <laughs> well, it's like the bigger boat one, which came out almost yeah. bluish. Yeah, because they put right. blueberries in there. Mm. I could, uh, I could drink all these. Wow. Good thing I got three more. What do you think of them apples, Chris? I think I like that. I think this is your style too. What's that? This. This it's red triple. triple instead of that, that West Coast IPA stuff. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Big West Coast guy. Yeah. yeah I, I don't forget my roots, Charlie. Yeah, your East Coast roots. <laughs> your your Minnesota roots. No, the uh I think that was the first beer. Actually, I, I, I think the first we I mean we talked about this previously, but yellowtail pale ale, right? I used mm. to be a big yellowtail guy from uh the Kolsch. Whatever you know, mm -hmm. the uh, um, Ballast Point, Ballast Point, yeah. right? Which then you know, like you'd be up there, like, oh, let me try one of them sculpin. <laughs> Game over. That was you know, I was like, that was the first uh, I think IPA I, I I actually liked. I I was never a fan of sculpin. Mm. It just I mean a lot of people loved it. You know, 
like I said, I was I was drinking too many IPAs before West Coast IPAs before, and I just got I got done with it early, and that's why I switched to stouts, porters, and barley wine. So, barley mm. wines. <laughs> so it's just it's like a know, pirate, huh? He's a pirate. Bar, barley wine. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I would. Uh, I think I'm rolling back around though. My palate is changing again. So I mean. I'm always a fan of a hazy, though. I mean, it's just you can't go away from that pillowy, soft taste and mouthfeel. It's super nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll I'll probably venture on back into West Coast IPAs at some point. A little stronger, a little harder. I drank enough of them today for crying out loud. Did you drink a few today? <laughs> no. With this can, you oh, you drank of. one. That was enough. Yeah. It's, it's, did you uh, did you end up at the beard today? No, I didn't. I was wrestling with that. St- I oh, was yeah. wrestling with my stupid laundry machine up there. The thing that goes around and around and washes clothing. Ah, gosh, what a nightmare that is. You know, they don't leave any room to work in those little laundry rooms. It's like, uh, you know, five and a half by five and a half. Mm-hmm. And you to get to where you need to get to, you got to move everything out of the way and then unhook everything oh gosh what a nightmare i'm still working on it it's crazy just losing my mind in there so i went and took a nap <laughs> see, that always helps. see if that helps <clears throat> we'll see how see how it works after this these uh this show i'll go in there and try and wrestle that thing to the ground what about you what was your which one's your favorite chris um i i gotta go with the new traditionalists that West Coast IPA, super, like, I mean, I'm just so well done, you know? If you're an IPA fan, I, I recommend uh, getting after it. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the horse. Mm-hmm. So the... Uh, I liked it. Yeah, you're a big fan of the... Uh, yeah, that was surprising, you know? What was yours, Steve? It's got to be the traditionalist, too. The new traditionalist. I mean, I, I, I like these... You guys um, are ganging up on me. I like the hazies because... They go down super smooth, but right. I yeah. want the t- I want to taste the bitter. Bitter, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so feel I was just trying to think, like you know, like the first time I had like a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, which doesn't, in in theory, shouldn't have that big hoppy flavor, but that's not. I mean, it is pretty hoppy, and and then going back to like the Green Flash and some of the the early ones, like you mentioned, the ones at Alpine when they first came. You know, that was like crazy. Nobody was doing beers like that. Yeah, it was such a game changer. <laughs> yeah. It was I lights remember, out back then. So years ago, um, Suzanne and I, it was uh um it was our anniversary and and um I had I had like so I didn't take the day off of work, but I was like, Hey, I can't work past five. You know, I'm not gonna um and, and something happened in this uh um like, you know, you're I'm not working past five, like all of a sudden I got to work past five, right? They're like, Hey, you can start at like, whatever. So the, um, so instead of like going, I don't know where me and Suzanne were going like Donovan's or something for, we, we missed our reservation, but ended up, it was a Wednesday and ended up at wing night at Alpine. <laughs> awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was so, like it was so great. For you. I'm like, Hey, yeah, Suzanne at that point, Suzanne wasn't gluten free. Oh. Um, so she was, uh, you know, she may have had a beer or, you know, I, I don't know what they would have had at that point. Probably just beer. Um, Maybe wine. I don't know if I don't know if they had wine, but I just remember the wings and Nelson, like drinking <laughs> Nelson and yeah. uh, uh, and eating those wings. They they would do like the full size wing. Oh, they were so good. They were just Yummy. unbelievable. Never had the wings up there. They were lights out at the old at the what turned into like the what well, was the pub, I guess, yeah. and then before they moved to the to the place before they closed down. Well, see, I was only at the the closet brewery that they had there right yeah. so the other end of the bookstore whatever yeah. was the, the well, little, restaurant. A little restaurant or a cafe called mcguffey's up there in alpine it was they had some tricked out uh food back then the people that owned it then and uh when they moved up to that end and it, did they build that other stuff on behind it where all the where the new spot is no so the the, the new spot was down at the uh um Right when you turn, right when you get off the freeway on whatever the, is that Tower Road or what's that road? Tavern. Tavern Road. So you take that left, right up there on the hill was the yeah. Well, that's that the mall. restaurant. Yeah, sure, and, sure. But well, before though, we had gone up there. Yep. You and I, and we went into this other part that was on the other end of that building where you park in the parking lot in there, and you walk down to it. Yeah. 
Well, so one end of it was the brewery, right? And then there was a hair salon, a used <laughs> bookstore, and then the other side was was the restaurant right, right. forever, yeah. that, which was probably the restaurant you're referring to. They closed that down. Oh, okay. They they just tore it out when when Green Flash bought them. They tore that out, revamped the little quote unquote pub, opened the restaurant down the road, and just made that as like the the, the growling, you know, the the tasting room, I guess. Yeah, yeah it was just a, mm-hmm. a, a straight tasting room. Mm. Wow. Man, I used to love going up there like to uh I I used to cover El Centro for work. So like every trip back was like <laughs> Wings and Nelson. Not a bad if deal. That no, was a good deal. Oh, I never I never uh I never really went up uh there. I went to that the newest spot in the little strip mall there and I went in there one time and I just bought uh like a couple of growlers or something and then yeah. I was out of there. And I only went to the other spot one time with you when uh, I think Exponential was released or something. We went up there mm-hmm. and we were get we got the like the last of it or something, and then uh, that was it. I, I had never been back after that. So yeah, that's been a minute. But that's where so that's where they're going to be brewing out of. Okay. I guess I I, I I did recall like they um they're going to be back in there. Good um in that same original brewery. I don't know about the, the tasting million- room or. Whatever that will be. They made some magic there for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the um so back to it just to 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 briefly recap what we uh what we had going on. The first beer we had was a a convocation uh um only release. It was from the the Horace and Staven uh Staven Nail uh tea set, uh Glycine uh was was the name of it. That was Charlie's favorite. Uh we followed that by uh New Traditionalists. Uh that was a, a burning beard and uh, hit it, Charlie. What's the other name? Sean McElhaney? McElhaney. McElhaney. It says a burning beard and McElhaney. Sean, we beer. butchered it. That's what we did. We butchered your name. He that needs West, to come on here. That West Coast Hey, we should Phenomenal. hit him up. See if we, I mean, if he's fresh out of the. Out of the Alpine Brewery, we can uh, hit him up, see if we can put him on here and let him uh, let him tell us what he's going to do. Right. That'd yeah, be no, they super interesting. Yeah, gosh, they're uh, you know, I, I think one time, um, yeah, no, that guy is phenomenal. His dad, Pat, phenomenal brewer as well. But the uh, so that was my favorite, uh, Steve's favorite as well was that that Bernie Beard, a couple of West Coast guys. Uh, we followed that up with that that ISO Nelson from Moxa, uh, was and good, uh, and finally the triple from Pure Project, a pure project, pure, uh, <laughs> the ISO, the Dragon Fruit Triple. That's that was funny. Good. They're one of them. They're both ISOs. Really? In search of right? Yeah. What's the? Oh yeah, two ISO. The, the hazy and then the. Uh, well played, Charlie. Good on call your, uh, on your so. calls. Well, that's it, it from it here. I guess uh, until next week, Charlie. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only, and compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home.
Go!